Hey there. So, it's been a little while since you've seen my face, but yeah. So, I've been cleaning for the last day and a half, uh, trying to get everything back in order after the summer. My art room, which is also my closet and my office, um, trying to get it back in order before it's winter and I'm in here a lot more so that I can actually work. And... I've been wanting to do this nail art technique for a while, but I couldn't justify spending between $30 and $50 for a set of nail tints. It's like the thinned out, um, just like super jelly formula nail polishes. Um, and luckily enough, I posted it on my Nerds Nail It Facebook page. Go ahead and like it. Um, that I found almost a complete set. I'm guessing that there is a yellow. I didn't find it there, but almost a complete set at Ocean State Job Lot. And instead of being $30 to $50 for the entire set, they were $1.50 a bottle. So don't ever think to not check like your random discount stores in your area for nail art supplies. I have found brushes, polishes, decals, decorations, everything there for little to nothing. And nail art doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. And really, I think I've paid between 50 and 70% less on 99% of my polishes. And that's with coupons and just finding frugal places to shop. But yeah, so I've been cleaning. It may not look like it, like over here is still kind of cluttered, but that's okay with me because I have added floor space. I've thrown out a ton of junk and I'm happy with that. So this video is kind of my, you know, prize to myself for getting things done this weekend. It's a long weekend off from work and my goal was to spend 50 to 75 percent, you know, cleaning and then 25 percent just for me, whether that's myself or getting ready for the next comic book convention, which is Rhode Island Comic Con, my show. I love it. Um, yeah, so this technique is super technical. I don't know. That's how it comes off, but it's nice it's it's supposed to have a nice outcome and i think that i've achieved that and if you like this technique or you want to see more types of these videos please give it a thumbs up and don't forget um i also post on the facebook page nerds nail it so check that out and if you try this technique feel free to post picture or how'd you like that uh, feel free to post pictures of your nail art that you've done on that page. I love to see what other people are doing and I can't wait to hear from you. So before it gets too late and also side note, I had to fast forward like a whole lot of this video because yeah, I'm still kind of using my phone and I ran out of space so I had to delete apps. And I had to fast forward through like my speaking parts. So I know I talk sp fast normally, but this is like almost Mickey Mouse. So I hope you can keep up. I hope it's not terrible and that you still enjoy it and get what I'm doing. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to add them down below and like and subscribe to my page. So before it gets too late or too long or longer than it already is, let's get to the art. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is the lead lighting technique. And first off, I'll show you the colors that we have. This is the tint version. It's Sally Hansen Triple Shine, like I was saying. This one is in watermelon. Then we have vitamin D light. So the creamy orange. Well, not creamy. Obviously, it's a tint. And then, I didn't get a yellow. I don't know if they don't make one or not, so I'm going to substitute with this one. It's the Sally Hansen Complete Salon. From what I remember, this is pretty sheer. Um, this is in Sunflower. 
so oh yeah it i'll see if it works if it doesn't i'll just put this in an old bottle of clear and thin it out so it's more jelly then we have uh see-through which is like a nice turquoisey kind of green and ice tint i think it's funny that's the only one that i think has tint in the name it's a nice blue and then this is grape jelly uh, makes sense and of course i'll be doing my super strength base coat uh, followed by two coats of my personal favorite white except i'm heartbroken i can't find milani anywhere anymore um i did find another bottle of this in this is the black swift i did find a bottle of this at job lot i don't know if they went out of business or if just cvs isn't carrying them anymore but yeah so these ones i got when they were on clearance and i'm like halfway through this bottle this is white on the spot it's my favorite white and it's fast dry top coat i mean uh super fast one coat whatever i always do two coats anyway um i might have my elmers because i'm going to be stamping this is the part i'm most nervous about is stamping um because in a lot of videos they make it look like it's really easy and that you just bing bang boom done and it's not um so this is going to be showing you the reality um nail simply nail optical does that she shows you that not all nail art is fast easy one time done so yeah we're gonna give that a try and then my stamping plate is from bundle monster it's 618 i think yeah 618 um if you haven't used stamping plates before bundle monster is really nice so far i have some fun at as well and uh cheeky but be careful because when they stamp them out like this is on the back for protective coating but the edges can still be really sharp and i have cut myself before um trying to clean these off a little too vigorously and obviously i haven't used this plate before because the protective coat's still on there this is the part that gets tricky so i'm going to be using this like mandala design and see how that comes out and of course like I said, the Elmer's, I'm gonna put around the outside um, for the stamping to make cleanup easier. And my go-to top coat for such feet um, will be for after. And I'm gonna be doing the lead lighting like usual with this one, or most of my fingers, sorry. Um, where you fill in the design. Essentially, you're making stained glass on your nails um, because they're thin, it gives them that kind of translucent feel like glass has. But on one, just to experiment, I'm going to sponge, like gradient sponge colors on. I've used this one before. Um, know these sponges, they're just makeup sponges. They are not expensive, but I always cut mine down and reuse them. Um, I think I still have the same oh, cut, same first package of these that I ever bought. Um, and I don't use them for makeup, just for nail art. But yeah. So on one, I'm just gonna do a sponge gradient of some sort using the colors. And I'm debating maybe using this pattern on that just to mix it up. Um, who knows, I might just use the same one and see how it varies. And yeah, so I'm gonna start. We're gonna do base coat and two coats of the Milani white on the spot. And forgot, this is my stamper. I'm gonna have to clean it off. Um, just Conad stamper. I've tried other ones. People say it's sticky stamper, um, or there. I think pretty much everyone that has stamping plates has their own stamper. This one I like the best so far. It's not too firm, not too soft, and some also say you're, you should prime it with a, a nail file. But I never did that. This is nice and original. Um, and then plates do usually come with a metal scraper but i found on some of them it was gouging the plate and so i switched to it's just one of those like member cards but they give you two so i use one of these and i don't notice any damage to the plate and, and you can cut it you can throw it away whatever um if you lose it, it's not a big deal so i'm gonna start and yeah let's get going
So we are done with the base coat and two coats of white. I skipped showing you guys the second coat of white. So we're just gonna move on. And this is a prime example of why I don't paint other people's nails. Um, I flood my cuticles, doesn't bother me any, but I feel like if I was doing someone else's, they would care a lot more. So first I'm gonna do a coat of my Elmer's, look at the fancy label. And then I'm gonna move on to stamping. I couldn't find my Conad paint, so I'm gonna use the Milani um, Quick Dry. Hopefully it doesn't dry too fast. Um, if you use Quick Dry on stamping plates, for some reason it doesn't like to pick up. So if that happens, I will just have to go find the Conad. So let's move on. start stamping. The Elmer's glue is dried. For the most part, there's a little spot there, but that's okay. So I always clean off the plate to start. These are just some cotton rounds. Um, I just have to make sure there's no fuzz. And then I'll clean off the stamper again, make sure there's no lint. It's all right everywhere. And my scraper. Excuse me. So I've seen some people, they do like one line of nail polish here, some cover it. I've tried both. I think it mostly just depends on the pattern. I do notice that if it's uh, super linear, like say diagonal lines, you need to scrape in the same direction. Because if you go against, the edge of the scraper will get stuck and pull out all the nail polish. So this one, oh, if I can get this open, I think I'm just gonna cover the whole thing and we'll see how it picks up. I'm also hoping that'll help keep the polish from drying too much. Granted, I'm not gonna need the whole image, at least on my thumbnail. Let's see. Nope, that didn't work. This is what I mean. <laughs> it doesn't always work. Maybe it's just had extra nail polish remover in the cracks. That's what I'm gonna blame it on. So we'll try again. When you do go through a lot of polish stamping, that's better. And you want to rock it to pick it up. And there's our image. It actually came out really clean, I'm surprised. Um, so you just want to line it up to the best of your ability. This pattern, I'm actually going to try and get the flower shape in the middle. And don't press too hard when you do transfer it. Ugh. Shit. That sucks. Okay. okay, yeah, reality is a nail art, right there. Exhibit A, or B, or C, or Q. So, yeah, I'll go back and fix that. I'm not gonna waste the time right now. But I'm gonna fast forward the rest of these ones so you guys don't have to hear any more potential curse words. But yeah, so hold on one second.
easy. I've done fast with the nails except for the ones I'm going to sponge reading on. And I went back and fixed this. It's not perfect still, but I just have awkwardly shaped nails. So if I can get one that's mostly perfect, like this one's not too bad, I'm happy. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip this over and use that side as my palette. And then I have this old little nail art brush. They're like fused together. And uh, it's a number 306. But I'm going to use this to fill in the areas. And on this one, I will sponge gradient and then we'll stamp over it once it's dry. But before I get there, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm going to go over and do a coat of Setch Vite. One thing to remember when you're applying a top coat to a uh, stamp design is you don't want to linger the brush there. You want to kind of do it fast and actually tr almost try to float the bristles over the top of the nail so that you don't drag the design. Uh, there's nothing worse than putting a top coat on and then smudging the whole design down. So I'm going to top coat and let that dry and then I'll start filling in the colors and I'm excited to see how this comes out. Side note. When I stamp, you want to use like a gentle rolling motion without pressing too hard because as you can see on this one, not only did I smudge, but it warped the whole design. So instead of being a nice symmetrical circle, it's now like this oblong egg shape. So yeah, it looks completely different than the other ones, but say la vie, this one didn't come out too bad, even though it's on my other hand, it's off center, but trying to center these on your fingernails is not easy because you just kind of hope and pray and guess. But I don't mind it, gives it a little variation, and yeah, so we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we have finished my lighting all of these nails, and I put a top coat on top to seal everything in. Didn't come out too bad. It's not as pigmented as I would have liked. I mean, if you look really close, I guess you can see the different tones, but from far away, I mean, you still get the effect. But, I don't know, maybe if I had put two coats, that'd be different. So now we're going to move on. And we're going to stamp our uh, sponge gradient on this thing. I'm thinking maybe just some random uh, pattern of the darker colors, and then I'm going to stamp over the top. Thank you. 
So I've kind of given up on this. Um, I know it's only two coats, but it is just entirely too thin. There is no build up. So I think I'm just going to try and salvage it and maybe stamp that other design and see how it comes out. And yeah, we'll see how that looks because if not, I'm going to be here all night. And here we have the finished product. Um, yeah, like I said, from far away, the colors seem to kind of meld together, but when you're up close, you can see the difference. Um, I kind of saved this nail. I don't hate it. Um, I think putting a different pattern on it was good. And I realized when I redid this one, I didn't put the Elmers around the outside. So yeah, I'm going to have to go back and clean that up. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. And who knows what I'll post next. <laughs>